Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am here with Deborah Lauren, who is a mindfulness and meditation coach and a divorce mom of two. She struggled through her own divorce and dealt with depression and guilt and all of the things that keep us stuck when life throws a plot twist our way. But now she teaches a heart-centered approach to healing and is dedicated to helping women through their divorce. So welcome. Yay. Thank you for having me, Renee. <laughs> so let's just start with um, what you do and why you do it. Okay. <laughs> Two important questions. So I am, like you said, mindfulness and meditation all wrapped up in mindset. And I coach primarily divorce working mothers who are really overwhelmed and kind of overbooked and overscheduled and overthinking all of the roller coaster ride that is the divorce life and having that work life balance and oftentimes they feel like divorce might sabotage their success their chance at happiness their ability to be the kind of parent they wanted to be all those different things and i really help women step into this new version of self mm -hmm. that they have to be in order to make good on those desires and those wishes and goals for themselves and their family and their future. And it can be really tough to do that when you are kind of stuck in the sadness of it all and in the hard parts of it all, which they are. And so I started to do this because I myself am a divorced working mother. And when I was going through it, there was no such thing as this. At least I didn't yeah. know that there was. I didn't know this kind of support was out there. And I went through a really tough time. Prior to the divorce, I had you know, a, a real bout with depression. I'd say about a year long where I was on medication and seeing a therapist regularly. And that's, you know, people go through that. But I realized that the medication itself was more just to keep me functioning. It wasn't actually helping me heal. And same thing with the therapy. And that could have been just my experience with the therapist kept me very much in the past and just trying to figure out how to make the past not hurt my future. Mm. But I didn't have a way to build my future out to start living the kind of life I wanted to live. I was very stuck in blaming the divorce, mm. blaming my circumstances, blaming that my now ex was never around, that I had two kids, that my family was across the country. I was a victim and a martyr, very much so. And so when I finally kind of had some exposure to mindfulness, to meditation, to outside sources of support, that's when my transformation began. And that's when things started to shift and my divorce ended up being somewhat like beautiful in that we now, even though we struggled, we now have this really friendship-based co-parenting relationship that is mutually respectful and our kids are thriving because of it. We both have successful, happy relationships with new people and we're both working, we're both loving life. And I realized more people need this. This uh, is It's yeah. such a toxic environment sometimes and there's such taboo and stigma surrounding it. If I can be a part of helping other women through it in non-traditional ways that maybe that's my calling in the way that I can serve in the best way. And so that's why I do it. So there's so much I wanna unpack here with yeah. what you just said. <laughs> and I don't even know where to start, but let's just actually start with the basic. What is the difference between therapy and what you do? Yeah, so therapy is, and I know that there is a lot of different kinds of therapy, so I'm going to be general here, but therapy tends to really focus on healing the past. I think therapy is structured to help you deal with the trauma, to help you heal from loss, to help you heal from change and um, any kind of like anxiety, depression, things like that, where you really have to work through past issues, past narratives, to help you function in today's present time. 
Mm. Coaching does do an element of that. And, and I do, and I know other coaches do, because you have to understand the kind of fundamental root of why you are behaving the way you are and why you have the beliefs that you do. But coaching really starts more present day, uses the past for knowledge and to have um, like a point of understanding. And then we start working to rebuild your future, to start understanding how do you nurture yourself? How do you look and think from your future self to design the kind of life that you want? And so it's a little bit more proactive and it's a little bit more future focused. So where does someone start then? If they come to you and they're, maybe their divorce is just finished up and they're still so angry and they can't see the possibilities of what can be, how, where, where do they start? Good question. <laughs> That's definitely a lot of people come to me that are still in that raw phase. And there's definitely a lot of acknowledging and nurturing that has to happen. But what I love is that by hiring a coach and choosing to work with someone that isn't your friend and isn't your parent and isn't someone mm. that really knows you and is a part of your day to day world, the best place to start is collecting that tribe of support so that you have people that are experienced and educated and are experts in their field guiding you through very tough decisions. And it's so helpful because, and I say this to a lot of people, when you're going through that phase of maybe you've just signed the papers or you're just right on that precipice of, okay, mm. now what? Now I have to be the single mom because dad only has them every other weekend or whatever that's happening. And you're in this constant stressed state of mind, yeah. right? That's usually what happens is that it may not even be super conscious. You may think I'm doing pretty well, you know, I'm making it work. I'm surviving the days, but your internal body, your mind body connection is going through a constant fight, flight, freeze kind of stress response. And so What's really helpful is having somebody that can help you downregulate your nervous system, which is helping your brain really move fuel from one part of the brain to the other that tells your body to either freak out and protect, fight, flight, or freeze, or it tells your body to rest, that you're safe, and it'll call on your executive functions, your ability to problem solve and look at the big picture and use logic and have patience and have compassion. And when you know how to do that for yourself, then you can start handling the stresses that come at you. You can handle that toxic email. You can really better balance your schedule at work. You can handle when your kids are having meltdowns. You can do all those things better. So I always tell people the first thing to do when you're coming out of a really stressful situation like a divorce and you don't know what's what and what's going to happen and what you can count on is to have somebody behind you that knows how to help you regulate your nervous system. That's the very first step, because once you learn how to do that, then you can start managing all the other things. It's like the roots of a tree. Once you have those solid roots, you can shake, you can withstand mm -hmm. those storms because you have that mental capacity, what I call the mental muscles, to be able to handle all the other stresses. A lot of people want the stresses to go away for them to feel happier or more in control. That's just not guaranteed. There's no way to take those away. So your first step is, well, armor yourself. Give yourself the tools to be able to handle them. So when you say regulate your nervous system, yeah. is are we talking about mindset? Is that the same thing or a different way? Or are you actually talking about some like scientific switch in your brain? Both. Both. So I, I think they're one in the same because I think we could talk about it as mindset, but what that's doing from a like neuroscience perspective is, is science. You're literally moving brain fuel 
from your limbic brain, which is your sympathetic nervous system. It's that fight, flight, freeze, stress response. You're moving blood, al alcohol, blood, <laughs> oxygen, <laughs> and glucose. I don't even drink. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> so you're moving blood, oxygen, and glucose to your, what's called your prefrontal cortex. So that's the part of your brain that when that's online, you're, you can access the executive functions I was talking about. So mindfulness and mindset is all about intention, right? It's all about awareness. Mm -hmm. It's all about finding neutrality so that you don't come at things from a place of emotion and you can logically make decisions based on information, based on facts, not based on, but I'm pissed and I want my money or right. whatever it is. So when you have that mindset skill, what you're doing is moving brain fuel from one part of your brain to the other. So there's a, a scientific thing that's happening in your brain every time you choose to be more intentional and more focused and more aware and more accountable to the way that you behave, to the way that you act, to the way that you think, to what you believe. It's all related. Oh, that's so fascinating. So does this, is this sort of like a, um, an offset of the law of attraction principles? Um, is it kind of a, and, and I'm asking this because I'm like knee deep in probably a dozen books about that right now. And so yeah. this whole idea of what you're saying is so fascinating yeah. to me. Yes. I'm so excited. I'm so happy you asked. <laughs> Well, so much of what I do is bridging that kind of spirituality yeah. with the science. Mm -hmm. And you guys, the reason the law of attraction and manifestation, all that visualization works is because of neuroscience. It's because there's this thing called the reticular activating system in the brain, and it acts like a bouncer. It's this cluster of nerves at the base of your skull, at the top of your spinal cord. And it literally flags things. Imagine, imagine your brain is like a nightclub, okay? And all the thoughts that you're having and all the things that you notice in your surroundings are like people in line. And that bouncer is saying who gets to be let into your brain, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're thinking I'm stuck my husband's, uh, hmm, hmm, I don't have any support. <laughs> like if you have all these thoughts, that reticular activating system is not going to let in anything that proves that wrong. It's only going to let in the things that prove that your life is as bad as you think it is. But if you start to visualize, right, and do this manifestation work and the law of attraction work, and you start to bring in language and awareness and literal focus to find the proof of the opposite, then that reticular activating system is going to start letting those things, it's going to flag them as relevant and your brain's going to want to prove more of that. And so it's really cool because it can work to your advantage or not. This is all subconscious. Mm -hmm. Obviously you don't know this is happening, but if you know that that's what's going on in your brain, then you can say, okay, what can I flag as relevant? What can I make important enough so that I start to notice that and find proof of that instead? And so when a coach has you visualize, all it's doing is training that bouncer to look for different qualities. Instead of like all the, you know, tall blonde girls getting in the club, they're going to let in a whole bunch of different people and make it a lot more of a fun, you know, dynamic group of people. And that's what you want to do with your thoughts. There's more than one thought. There's more than one way to handle a situation. And so this is a really kind of holistic way to retrain the way your brain processes and interprets what's going on. Oh, that's so fascinating. Um, where did your studying come from? Like, I'm just so curious because you, I'm sitting here like in awe. I'm like, wow, she's so smart. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> honestly, I don't have a certification in this per se. I am an avid reader. Um, I am taking a lot of prereq courses to do a certification called neurosculpting. And that's where I did learn a chunk of this. Um, it is a a science and it actually bridges meditation with neuroscience. So it's taught by a neuroscientist. Her name is Lisa Winberger, and she is um, the owner of the Neurosculpting Institute in Colorado. 
And that's so fascinating that when you start to bridge those two areas, that that's where like the magic happens. Oh my gosh. Well, it's just all of us are, we have a tendency to either be science minded or more yeah. kind of spiritual feeling minded. Mm -hmm. And they both have so much merit. And sometimes it just takes bridging them or it takes saying you know what I'm really science minded I don't really believe in all that stuff and yeah. so you can speak in this language right with the yeah. reticular activating system but if I were to go to someone who was a lot more you know woo woo let's say and more of a yogi then they don't need the scientific explanation they're really good with well yeah thinking these thoughts makes me feel better and then i notice things more and so there's a language out there for everyone mm. but it really is all the same thing it's just how you explain it and how you can resonate because ultimately it's all about what you believe and right. how you can whatever you have to do you can't fake it till you make it for this stuff because it's right. all about well, if I don't believe it, authenticity vibrates way higher than positivity because mm. that it's, it's real, you know, this faking happiness thing doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work. You know, it's great for social media maybe, but right. <laughs> not great for change. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that that's such a good, such a good point. Um, I mean, you raised uh, yoga and I know yeah. that you are trained in yoga nidra. Can you yes. share a little bit about what that is and how that ties into all of this? Great. I'm, I'm more than willing to. So yoga nidra is kind of the one real meditative kind of woo woo aspect that I am trained in. I'm certified in, and it's such a beautiful form of meditation. It's all about being guided. So it's not, you're not alone with your thoughts. You are a little bit, but for the most part, it is a systematic relaxation technique. And so you are guided through five stages of relaxation and it takes you all the way from just setting the tone, getting comfortable to being aware of your breath, to doing a body scan and really paying attention and giving attention to all parts of your body, not just the major ones that you're used to every day. And then you really get to play around with opposites. And then you get into a visualization and then you get really kind of deep into yourself. And then we kind of close you back up again. And the premise behind this is that we all are multidimensional beings and we have layers of consciousness or layers, what I call sheaths, and mm. they protect our most inner self, like our truest self, that concrete, unchangeable, all good, all knowing self. And that's called your Atma. It's also called Atman. It kind of just depends on where you've learned it. But outside of that Atma are these five sheaths. And what's so fascinating is that these layers really affect the way that you view the world. And so when you're looking at your outside circumstances, you're looking at them through your koshas, these sheaths, K-O-S-H-A-S, -S, koshas. And each one represents a different part of you from your physical body to your breath body, to your emotional body, your mental body, and then that bliss body, that atma. And so when you're looking at life, if those sheets are murky and messy or blocked, you're going to interpret the world very differently than what it's really showing you. And so what Yoga Nidra does is it systematically like, keeps those layers at bay, it kind of puts them to rest, they go to sleep. So you can access that Atma without any interference. You can introduce ideas and goals and dreams. Maybe you can heal from trauma while you're in that really like spongy place where you're just accepting everything. And then, and it's safe. And then we kind of close you back up again. And what's great as a different layer is that once you know this practice, you can start to learn and I teach you and you coach with me what koshas are blocked and how to unblock them. And so you realize now when you're, I'll give you an example. Let's say you get really stressed out in traffic or when you're waiting in line and it's taking forever or like your kid can't make a decision, you know, like anything that yeah. has to do with impatience and things aren't moving, that's usually a sign that your physical kosha is blocked. So you yourself are stuck 
you are not moving in a certain area of your life, or maybe you're not exercising enough. Maybe your blood flow isn't flowing enough. There's a stuckness there. And so when you can learn how to fix that and get that kosha clear, well, now it's not that people are going to be faster or that traffic's not going to exist. It's not going to bother you as much. You're not going to get as affected. And there is so much empowerment in realizing that, oh, if I can change how I interpret life, life doesn't need to change for me to be happy. And what a gift is that? Because oh my gosh, yeah. we, can't, we can't control traffic. Yeah. And, you know, and this goes to every, almost every problem that you might find yourself in, your kosha is controlling how you view it and controlling how you respond to it. It goes both ways. And so by understanding how to nurture those layers, you can really do a big, you know, game changing number on how you're dealing with what life throws at you. Which might be a really difficult ex-husband, someone right. who's high conflict. I mean, yeah. that's, that is, I always used to say, or I always do say, you don't have to show up to every fight you're invited to. I love that. You know? And so, but that, and I think so many people feel like they have to respond to everything. Yeah. And what it sounds like what you're saying is you don't, and you, you get to choose how you're going. It doesn't mean that they're going to change. They're still going to nope. be the asshole, but you know, you're, you can just respond in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just so many layers to that. And you, this allows you to go at your own pace because you only clean up your coach and you only kind of let it flow as fast as you're ready, you know? So a coach will definitely ask you to try and to get out of your comfort zone, but you get to learn you in such mm -hmm. a different way because a lot of who you are is reactionary. A lot yeah. of who you are is habit. It's, it's coping mechanisms. You don't even know if that's you or if it's just the way you're used to being. And so this helps you realize what's, what's habit and what is true to me and where am I comfortable? Mm -hmm. What feels good? What do I want to get rid of? What do I want to let go of? And then and honoring these koshas, I have this big self-care wheel and it in its physical stuff and emotional stuff that you can start to train and make time for in your life and hold new boundaries and say no to things mm. and really audit who you're spending your time with. And there's so many things you can do. And so it sounds like what you're talking about in your work has really nothing to do with your divorce. <laughs> I know it's honestly yeah. that I used to coach anyone and everyone. Yeah. I'm just focusing on divorced women because there's just usually some pretty clear things that, that mm -hmm. warrant this kind of mindset work, but no, you don't have to be divorced to need this. In fact, right. any change, right? Any yeah. time you need to become a different version of yourself this is important work. I always joke, and I'm sure you've heard this, like in the business world, they say you can't make a seven figure income off of six figure habits. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. You yeah. cannot have goals of evolving out of a toxic relationship or moving past your divorce when you're stuck in the drama of it. You right. have to be making decisions as the kind of woman that doesn't get pissed off at those things and doesn't get exhausted after reading emails and doesn't, you know, do all that stuff. Is it understandable that you are affected a hundred percent, but you don't have to live there. You don't have to make decisions from that place. And so that's what this work is all about. Kind of teaching you how to be neutral about your yeah. life, which is the hardest thing to do oh, yeah. because, you know, like I said, that limbic brain that I was talking about that fight, flight, freeze, we inherit that in utero, okay? We get our mother's stress crazy. response from oh, birth. That's and we crazy. use that, it's our only tool. Think about tantrums from two, three, four-year-olds. It's because they only have a stress response. They don't have their prefrontal cortex. Mm. You don't get a fully developed prefrontal cortex until about 25. Oh, crazy. That's a long time practicing stress. Yeah. <laughs> right? Routing to your stress response. That's your go to. That's your main backup. Mm. So, no wonder when you're 30, 40, 50, going through a divorce, 
your, your main like response is not going to be, Hmm, I should consider all sides and I should show compassion. I should just really call on some patience right now. That is not your practice response. Mm. That is a learned skill that you have to really in non-threatening ways. And then you can apply it to the emotional parts of your life. All right, such good stuff. Oh. <laughs> All right, as we start to wrap up the end of yeah. our chat, I do, I can't let you go without talking about angel cards because yes. if anyone is following you on social media, you pull angel cards all of the time. Yeah. Um, so I, and it's a super fun little thing. So let's- I got them. Oh, you do, let's pull one. <gasps> yes, okay. <laughs> well, wait, wait, before, before we get there- I'll do um, a quick- tell, Tell it, tell me how we can follow you, how people can connect with you and work with you. Sure. So I am on Instagram. That is my favorite place to be. Um, so I am there at blooming.post.divorce. So it's blooming post divorce. Um, that's my main kind of social media place. And then my main website where all of my information is that's not simply divorce focused is heartcenteredyou.com. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Now let's All pull right. a card. All right. Yeah. So these are Oracle cards. They are about 44, really just like spiritual, but they don't have to be anything. It's whatever you want. And it gives you focus and guidance. They're all positive and they're all very much about giving intention to your day. And there's a lot of things you can do with them, but I just pull one card um, when I do samples. So that's what we'll do. Do you want me to like, can I do the whole prayer? Are you cool yeah, with that? Yeah, do it. Okay. Yeah, let's All do right. it. All right, so if you're following along, just put your hands to your heart or wherever it feels comfortable. Close your eyes and just allow yourself to have a few minutes, just you. All right, deep breath in with me. Release. Ong namo guru dev namo. Ong namo guru dev namo. Ong namo guru dev namo. Spirits of the highest good angels to our left and to our right, in front of us, behind us, above us and below us, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us today on this podcast with Renee. Thank you for just showing up and for giving us the support and guidance we need. Sometimes it's tough love, sometimes it's a healing message. Whatever we need to know today, we are here and listening. Okay. All right. And that prayer that I said, um, it's a Sanskrit prayer and it really is just about remembering. It's not about what the angels have to tell you. It's that they're just reminding you something you already knew, but it was in that subconscious. And so we're bringing it forward. All right. So we pulled Lady Nada, Heart mm -hmm. Awakening. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. And this says, awaken the acceptance of divine love, give and receive in balance. So I can, if you want, I can give you a link to the description. Do we have enough time for me to read some and, or I can just. Yeah, read a little bit. In. Okay. <laughs> Lady Nada. Okay. So it says the cave of your heart is opening wide for you to experience divine love. You have an opportunity to overcome past pain, heartbreak, and letdowns. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful time to cherish and love yourself and then allow yourself to be cherished and loved by others. If you feel love revealing itself clearly in your heart, have the courage to move into a state of trust. You are reminded that when love is present, when divine love is present, there are no obstacles to overcome. It will be there clear, pure, and real for you to experience. Your relationships are being brought into harmony on all levels of your life. Give and receive divine love with yourself and all those around you. Oh, that couldn't be a perfect. more perfect card. <laughs> Thank I you so much, it. Deb. I love, love, love this chat with you. And oh, I just adore so you and the work that you're doing. So thank, thank you. you.